Hey, hey, this is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Well, hello, everybody. How's it going? You know, it's it's uh, it's 4th of July here in the States. Mm, but, uh, happy 4th of July Day. Yeah, you know, you're like, what the heck's that? I don't know. I know what it is. Of course it's you do. Independence Day. We, we know. Because we, we spread our... Movie. We, yeah, we... <laughs> it's where the aliens come down and, like, shoot you. Is that what we get to look forward to? Because 2020 hasn't been enough. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. <laughs> At uh, this point, I'm I'm expecting anything, but uh, you yeah. know. <laughs> yep, that's uh, how it is. So, uh, so yeah. Hey there, folks. It's uh, it's a nice hot summer day here in the states, and Jared, it's probably winter for you, right? Uh, it's very much winter um, for me here this morning. It's going to be hard um, to sort of equate this to Fahrenheit, but it was, it felt like one degree Celsius here this morning. It was actually about four or five degrees Celsius in the morning when I woke up, but it felt like one. And that's close to freezing. Here. Yeah. Yeah. I can't really. Uh, <laughs> it, so very, very, whatever close to freezing is over there for you. 32 that's degrees. That's how cold it is. Well, 33 would okay. be close. 32 would be freezing. So let's call it 37 degrees. Okay. Yeah. We'll call it that. It's, it's, it's cold. It's hot as all get up for me in Sun the Cow. So. Um, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. So, uh, hey, folks, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but last episode was episode 200. 200. 200. And uh, good times were had by all. And I just got to give a big, huge shout out thanks to, first off, David McIntosh, who uh, from One Up Arcade. He came on and gave that uh, initial interview, and we thought that was all that we were going to be uh, having. <laughs> and then, bef- mm. like, as I was recording that, I got a message from Mel Kirk, who is the COO over at Zen. You all know him. And he goes, hey, I've got this guy, John D., who also works at 1UP Arcade, and he wants to come on. And it was like, sure! <laughs> and... If you didn't notice, we've... See, look at this. We're doing a little split-screen action right here, Jared. And oh, yeah. uh, we, we we switched to a different uh, video service, I guess you might call. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's not Skype, which is great. <laughs> yes. Because Skype was... Skype was calling all, causing all the audio delay lagging that was going on for Jared that was driving everybody yeah. mental. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. More than mental. Jeez. <laughs> It was terrible. <laughs> so I did some research and everything, and I came across this uh, guy that has a program for OBS, which is the on-air broadcasting program that a lot of Twitch users and everybody use. And his thing is called OBS Ninja, and that allows you to import cameras directly. And even more importantly, it allows Jared to actually see what's being broadcast because before, he had to deal with my secondary camera <laughs> and not see anything mm. else that was going on. Yeah, that's right. So I'm actually watching the the Twitch feed now, and I'm sort of monitoring from a video perspective what's happening on the Twitch feed, and also so I can chat to all you folks in the chat because I wasn't doing that last week because it was like brand new and shiny, and we all were like you know we we're deep in like interview mode, and all you guys were giving us great feedback in the comments about you know audio is going screwy and everything, but none of us were looking at it. So sorry well, about that. So so yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not the smartest idea to try out new software when you have guests. But on the other hand, we wouldn't have been able to have hosted four people in no Skype way. and had an actual broadcast that worked. So even even half as well is how it worked on our two hundredth episode. <laughs> so that's saying something about Skype and NDI yeah, feed. Yeah, yeah. Skype and NDI feeds like great in theory, not great in practice. In theory, true. And I don't know. Yeah. Anybody that's paid attention to the show long enough knows that this has been an ongoing problem. I mean, God, we miss the days of Blab, don't we, Jared? <laughs> oh, Blab was so good. Oh, such a good service. I wish some. I wish Google or somebody big bought them out and just turned that into what is now Meet because it was just so good. I, I guess mean, it worked Zoom right out the like gate that. for us. We didn't have any mm. issues at all with that. I think probably Zoom's the closest thing to it now. Um, yeah, but. But I, I don't know. Zoom has its own control, and like you have to use. I don't know. Mm. I, I I know people are using it and and making it work, but it didn't seem like a lo- well. Part of the problem is is that if you go any longer than forty five minutes, you have to pay for it. 
pay. Yeah. <laughs> and well, it, you know, it enforces us to keep the episode short. Um, <laughs> or, <yeah. laughs> we, we don't need to do that, do we? <laughs> no. So anyway, I just want to say uh, a huge thanks to those guys for uh, for joining us for that episode 200. And uh, if you want to, if you want to know why, when you watch the YouTube video uh, or listen to the audio that Jared posted, why there's these weird non sequitur jumps and talking, it was because when I came out of the uh, interview with David, for some reason my mic got muted. And Mel's mic was doing this massive feedback. And so I spent about 10 minutes trying to problem solve. And that's why I didn't look over at the comments to see that I was on mute. Mm. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, everybody in, within our chat could hear me just fine. So we didn't. We were none the wiser. So conversations were being had that none of you would uh, know about. So, so. so I think in short, what we actually need is just a director for the show. So oh. Chris and I can just focus on, on the show. And then someone else can do vision switching with OBS and and manage all that for us because that'd be sweet, right? Yeah. So that I'm not so that I'm not having to you know pat the head and rub the belly at the same time while I'm that's, doing all this. That's right, because you know no one can do that really. You, know, you try, but it's really hard. <laughs> Joe mm. Rogan doesn't have to put up with this. Um, no, <laughs> that's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, he's only got what is it six million. 14 million viewers or subscribers, something, uh, you know, like that. And uh, I know we're over 100. <laughs> so there you go. That's, surely that's enough. We just need to get syndication now. What we need really, what we need is a, we need a sponsor. And then we can, you know, say that uh, these guest cameras, it's all sponsored by that company. And then we can place the blame on them. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how it works, right? Yeah, I think so. We need to like sell advertising slots in the show now. Like you do live drops uh, in the show. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! There. Don't don't do live drops. Those are too difficult for me to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> Oops! See, look at that. I I even hit a wrong button right there. See, this Burp. is what's. All right. Um, what are we going to do today on the show? Well, we figured that uh, what we had planned for the second half of the show for episode two hundred, we could kind of roll into today. But one of the things that got cut from the episode was Jared's kind of comments because he had not seen or been privy to the interview prior. No, to, my uh, scintillating watching. comments that got cut from the show. Yes, rudely, I, I hacked those things <laughs> right out. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the um, things that I, I, I gleaned from, it, and this is you know I'm gonna. It was only a week ago, but you know that may as well be a year ago for me at the moment. Um, so uh, one of the things that struck me um, from the whole show is that uh, and this is interesting because i shared the um the show in a couple of places last week including the arcade one up facebook page oh and people cool. people were surprised to see um not sorry not the official one the unofficial one that um uh patrick walton manages um not patrick walton yeah p dubs yeah okay. I, I was it's, I'm sorry, Patrick. I always like I had to double think, you know, because P Dubs is such a departure from Patrick Walton. It does my head every time. <laughs> um, so yeah, anyhow, I shared it in there, and really, lots of people were focusing on the fact that the thing won't have Wi-Fi when it's released, which is um, kind of like they've only got one cabinet right now that has Wi-Fi at all. So yeah. I mean, it was kind of a pipe dream. I was hoping that maybe that everything from now on would go Wi-Fi, but I'm not entirely surprised. But go ahead. The interesting thing was, and this was a chat that um, uh, Patrick and I were having, is that what was interesting is that when um, RK One Up were looking at what Toyshock were doing, they were shouting rather loudly about who would make a cabinet without Wi-Fi. And uh, it turns out they will. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it, was, it was, it was interesting. You know, I get this. Things change and the direction of what you want to do with the product changes. But it was a little bit amusing to, to sort of see that. Anyhow, that aside, um, the, yeah, the lack of Wi-Fi was confusing a lot of people. And like, they were going, well, why would they do that? Why isn't it online? And I said, well, you know, it, again, I don't think these people actually watched the video. Uh, they just read my my very extensive notes 
and drew their own conclusions from that. So maybe I should just not write notes. Um, and maybe people watch the show in full. But um, they uh, they seem to be like locking on the fact that, well, you know, uh, I, I, when I said that it was relating to the agreement struck um, in the license that, that they decided not to go with Wi-Fi because, you know, online leaderboards are, you know, using Mel's own words, next level. Um, so um, it, it they were going, well, you know, it can't be a licensing related thing. You know, it's just why would they restrict access to Wi-Fi based on a license? Well, you, you don't know, you see, because <laughs> licenses are hard. So... <laughs> It, well, especially said, you know, since you're talking about, well, I mean, Star Wars is all the same license. So like on the Star Wars pin, if it was that way, who knows what the deal is. But uh, there's where I think NBA Jam is specific for the reason why they have the Wi-Fi. So, yes. So that you can actually play with another person <laughs> at the same time as you're going. Um mm. Meanwhile, there are other cabs that they announced at the same time. Uh, those aren't Wi-Fi. So I don't they know. They don't need to be because there's literally no reason for them to be. And the only reason why people are screaming about Wi-Fi is because of leaderboards and they want online leaderboards. Um, the, the other thing <laughs> no, was they need to be, <laughs> you know. And the other thing too is like, well, if... The other thing, of course, is updates. But, you know, both... Well, and uh, he addressed that by saying that... USB. They, yeah, they have the USB, and they learned their lesson the hard way with Gen 1, where they were having to replace the entire board. And, yeah. uh, you, you know, they'll have it there for firmware and uh, software updates of that nature, if need be. What um, I think Patrick was saying, as well, is that it's... Uh, it, the whole USB concept is interesting, because he said, while it may be on the board itself he said that on some of the other cabinets that rk one up produced the the usb update slot isn't something that's made readily accessible like you have to sort of clamber inside the cabinet to get to the board and then plug the usb um into there so what will be interesting to see is when this thing comes out whether that usb port is actually accessible or not um without having if, to you know dive deep into the cabinet yeah i wonder if that has anything to do with it so i've been watching a lot of youtube videos now related to all the one-up arcade mods that people are doing and uh, mm. i've watched a couple about you know people installing raspberry pi and everything and again i wonder if maybe that is uh arcade one-up making it not so easy uh, to just hot load a USB stick with, I don't know, I don't even, I don't even know. There's the potential of being able to hack in, uh, I guess, is what I'm, what I'm saying. Uh, the other um, one that, uh, the you know, the other cabinet that um, um, at Games is producing, um, which is kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit. So don't go, yeah. don't go hog wild yet, Jared. <laughs> <clears throat> so I won't go hog wild, but it's saying that they let you bring your own ROMs, Spe like special sort of ROMs. But they let you bring your own ROMs and put ROMs and put them onto your arcade cabinet. So that's their strategy for that. I don't know if arcade one. I think arcade one of more like a, you know, a solid state. If you like, when you refer to solid state, is you can't change anything on it. Right. It's not designed to have uploads or like any sort of user content uploaded into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. So. That was what you gleaned off of the Facebook page after posting it with uh, the Wi-Fi thing. What else? Yeah. Uh, what else did you get uh, out of this? So out of the whole interview, it sounds like um, that the thing I would like to hear is that RK One Up are just so so confident about their brand and their approach to this product. Like there's, they know exactly what they're doing. They know the market. Um, they have one hundred percent confidence in how they've gone about the product production and. They have all their um, supply chain sorted out and they're just ready to go, basically. That's the thing that gives me a lot of confidence is is that. And the other thing too, like uh, aside from just the the confidence in the brand, the, the their steadfastness with what their product direction is as well. So they, they are only going to be focusing on, for this round, a standalone unit that's designed to be 
just something you have in your lounge room. You don't have to worry about configuring. And this is a point that was brought up in the Facebook um, group as well. It's like some people actually don't want to stuff around with Wi-Fi and have to deal with that. Like they just want to turn the thing on and start playing. And well, <laughs> to, to me, that's why... You spend 600 bucks on this thing, right? Yeah, but it, it's... it For the longest time, it's why I was not a PC gamer. It was just mm. so much easier to... I put in my disc, I play my game. I don't have to worry about configuration of graphics or anything else of that nature. I'm not worried about what the frame rate is. It's no. this. This is what you have with console. And then yeah. the same thing happened with pinball, where I... You know, what got me into digital pinball back in... 2001, 2002, was visual pinball, right? Mm -hmm. But it was just such a pain in the butt to go through all the steps to get it going and, and functioning. And, and like, I had my laptop finally dialed in great, and then I would go and try and play on the PC, and I was like, oh, wait, I got to copy over everything to this oh, one to you know, make it. It was such a pain. You, know, like and, you really had to work hard for it, didn't you? Yeah, back then? yeah. Like, and I mean, I know work. people say that it's so much easier now and everything, but the problem yeah, yeah. Is, is that now I just don't really want to dive into it at all. I'm happy with Zen's product. I'm happy with Zacharias' product. I'm happy with, you know, what everybody's put. I was happy with Farsight's product. It just was simple. Mm. It worked. You didn't have to think about it. They um, did. They did all the heavy lifting for you. So all you need to do, turn the thing on, and providing you have everything initially configured, such as your graphic settings, and everything to your liking, and to the specs of your video card, you literally just plug and play the thing and go and enjoy. In a lot so, of respects, it's kind of it's it's also, you know, I use an iPhone as mm. opposed to an Android platform phone. Yeah. And I have a friend that swears by Android, but here's the difference. He loves to tinker. He likes yeah. to crack into things and set the programs up exactly the way he wants them to function. Whereas if you're an iOS user, too bad. This is the, this is the program. This is how it's going to function. And unless you plan on mm. jailbreaking your phone <laughs> and vo you know, null and voiding the warranties on everything, um, you, you have to take what you get. So I'm definitely yeah. more of the, hey, so long as it works, I'm cool. I don't need to futz and customize and, and get in there. Yeah, that that's true. I remember those days on Android when I was putting custom ROMs on every second week. Um, but I got to the point where I just didn't care anymore. And I stopped doing it because it was, it's like, again, you had to really work for it. And stuff didn't work right. And there was just like, you're constantly chasing your tail. And that's what it felt like a bit with um, with Visual Pinball back in those early days. It really did feel like when you it was whack a mole problems right you whack one mole and then another one pops up that you got to try and fix yeah and uh i remember my first introduction to um vpin was buying a pre-compiled disc from somebody on i think it was ebay or something oh, like that where, that's where they yeah it was like they actually all they said is like this is free they made it very clear that this software is free you can download it for free and you don't need to pay for this, but if you don't want to spend the time doing that, here it is for twenty bucks. Right? They were and they were they were selling you a CD-ROM that just happened to have content on it. It that was already <laughs> essentially with detailed instructions about you do this, you extract this here, you put that there, and you start playing. And it's true; it really did make it a lot easier to get into V Pinball initially. Like, and now I think uh, I you know I can't really speak to the onboarding experience with V Pin now because um, I haven't touched it ever since, well, Pinball Arcade came around. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really a good um, person to speak to about that and the, how e how easy or not easy it is to set up. But yeah. uh, anecdotally, it sounds like it's a lot better now. So one of the things that I... Well, there's two things that I picked up on. I'll, I'll touch upon the first one. Because uh, mm. the second one is going to get us into the App Games product. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. the, the... I think I know what you might be referring to there, but let's, get, let's, <laughs> Possibly. Get, let's push on. Possibly. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the first thing that, that struck me was with these pinball cabs that Zen is working on the software specifically to fit the monitor that they're using. Mm. And there's a reason for that, and that is most of Zen's original tables are wide body pins. They're not they sure are. Yeah. Very wide in some cases. In some cases, exceedingly so, yeah. So I think they're I don't know I'm very curious to know what they're going to be doing graphics wise, you know, are they actually physically moving ramps so they actually are visible the entire time and not going off the edges or or what they're doing uh with that. But they're also encoding 
for the haptic feedback, specifically with what Arcade One Up is doing. All these steps that they're doing with this makes me wonder uh, if somebody does Raspberry Pi one of these things so that they can put in their full Zen arsenal, uh, how that's going to function because yeah. I, it's not going to fit necessarily the same way and it's not going to play the same way as what Arcade One Up's product is going to play. No, definitely not. It's going to be... Um, and people will mod. Like, they they will take this thing and they will try to mod it. But the challenge will be that the the way that Zen, as you say, has custom designed the software to fit on this cabinet and, most importantly, custom designed an interface and feedback mechanism board, most likely, to connect everything together, including the button interfaces and everything that is going to be the interesting thing to reverse engineer because I think it won't take, I don't think they would have gone down the path of a generic plug and play controller, um, like, you know, and let's emulating an Xbox controller, for example. Um, so getting that to interface with something like a Raspberry Pi and have it work properly with full feedback and everything like that. And also, you know, the fact that, the board also probably can supplies the voltage for the solenoids that give you that feedback. You know, that's going to be a bit of a reverse engineering challenge for an in, a software engineer. Um, yeah, yeah. To install, it not look it, anything, providing you know how it works and you can you can sniff it and put oscilloscopes on it, you can reverse engineer it. But the real question is, will it be worthwhile doing? <laughs> Will it be worthwhile spending the time? Right, because this is the other thing that I've noticed with watching these videos. People are swapping out basically everything but the shell itself of these arcade one-up uh, cabinets. Um, you know, some people are even ex you know swapping out the monitors. Uh, most mm. most of everything I've watched is keeping the monitor, but uh, partly because for these arcade one-up machines, they are a five by four. Uh, screen, which good luck finding one. <laughs> you know, oh, that's today that's an odd, odd size. Yes, that's for sure. Um, without having to window it or, or you know go through whatever you need to do. So a lot of people are keeping the monitors, but they're swapping out you know arcade sticks and buttons and and you know putting in new speakers and I mean basically the minimum cost for any of these swap outs is about 150 bucks, and it just goes up from there. So. There again, you come back to the, the, the idea of, well, if you're buying the pinball cabinet for the cabinet and that aesthetic, uh, how much are you going to have to spend in order to make it function <laughs> how, you're, how you're dreaming of it? Or is there another product out there that uh, might just meet your needs better? Because especially with, uh, with the pinball product, you need steam. And that's not just a Raspberry Pi. That's uh, that's a that's pretty a big computer. thumping box. That's a PC with yeah. a decent spec. Yeah, exactly right. It's uh, it's very interesting. On the subject of modding, um, I also read in the, uh, the this was the uh, the Toy Shock page uh, where people were modding all their Toy Shock cabinets. Oh, okay. And I think and I think one of them, you know, some people have gone to quite great lengths to to mod the cabinet and they've turned they've actually turned the the cabinet itself uh, they just used it as a shell basically because it was the right size for them but and and you know that size pinball machine isn't really something you just go to a like a cabinet manufacturer and say hey could you make that for me like they they're not really available so this person um you know, went to the trouble of doing it but in the comment he goes, yeah, look, I really like the, the size in the cabinet, but geez, the software blows. <laughs> <Honest>. <laughs> and like, it's like those, those got these tables, boy, they are rough. And like, you know, well, I'm still seeing problems and I'm, I'm sure that they resolved this allegedly in the next version of the board they're releasing and, uh, and et cetera. But like the, the lag is just really, it's like, you can't unsee it once you see it. Um, so it's amazing it's really how bad. many of the reviews for that, uh, up on Amazon mainly, uh, where mm. people are like, there is a little bit of lag, but you get used to it and then it just plays fine. 
And I'm like, mm. what, what? And yet they're still giving it a five star. <laughs> and I'm like, that's an, that's an interesting uh, approach to go, here's a noticeable flaw. You get used to uh, it. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, you know, my, my, my car has a really uncomfortable seat, but you get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes this howling noise whenever you make a right hand turn but eh, after a while you kind of look forward to it yeah, so. yeah you, you get used to it hey look it gets people off the road <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the other thing that uh, I was thinking about was just in terms of uh, like some people wanting to have lots and lots of tables on their pinball table um, yeah. is something that I'm experiencing so experiencing using this uh, Street Fighter cab that I have that oh, yeah. uh, has been fully modded to the point that it even has pinball buttons. And yes, I have mapped everything from Zen and TPA and uh, Demon's Tilt and <laughs> Zacharia everything. and Pinball Wicked. It all works in there now. Yeah, it's great. Um, no, I... But it's also got, uh, there's a bunch of arcade games on there. Uh, mostly Neo Geo, but there's uh, a few. Mm. And then there's also just a whole mess of you know, PS1 and PS2 and games like that, right? And what I'm right. noticing is it's too much choice. Uh-huh. Um, right, you're getting decision paralysis. I- exactly. And mm. I find myself, basically, there's about five tables, or five tables, five games that I play, and that's it. Um, beyond that, it's kind of, a, you know, it's, it's fun to flick over and look at some of these things, but, and, and I think because, uh, uh, the guy that's long-term lending me this, he actually owns all the software, uh, made sure it was legal for him to rip it over by talking to the software companies, um, that were responsible for it and, you know, looking at his user rights and all that jazz. So I think there's maybe max 250 different games or titles on this thing. So then I'm watching these videos and they're talking about having, you know, 50,000 games or whatever. 50,000? It's what? What? We're, we're, I'm talking, we're talking every single Nintendo, every single Super Nintendo, every single N64, every single PS1 game, every single PS2 game, every single Sega Master System, every single Sega Genesis. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then, and that's not even including the arcade ROMs. (laughs) <laughs> oh right okay. of, every, of every single arcade game that's you know ever existed on the planet you know basically and that's where i do think that yeah it's like you said paralysis of choice um mm. and there once i realized that there was only about five games that i wanted to play i started playing this thing more and more and now it's down to the point that uh i'm somehow have become obsessed with pac-man again and uh-huh. uh yeah <laughs> that's a like Pac-Man, like I, when I was in Netherworld and I had a mate who was really into vintage games, he he got me into Pac-Man. He goes, "Yeah, it's not as easy as you think, hey." Because yeah, you know, I just I've never really played the thing that much. I, of course, everyone knows what it is, but when you start playing it, you realize just how devilish the game mechanic is. Right. I mean, I, I basically because this is the actual arcade board, um, I've memorized the two or the three patterns that I'm supposed to be using (laughs) and Mm. even having them mostly memorized there, there still becomes brain flubs in us when you die. Um, Yes. I still haven't gotten past 50,000 points. I I finally saw the Galaga ship for, you know, a bonus fruit to eat. And that's about as far as I've gotten. Um, And then I threw in, because the other ROM that comes with it is uh, Pac-Man plus, I believe. And I started playing that and I, completely sucked at it because there is no patterns that you're able to to follow um, right so but it's kind of been it's kind of interesting to just kind of sit there and, and veg out and and do and play but again knowing that i'm not sitting down and going okay which of these 250 am i going to play now it's hey i'm either going to play pac-man i'm going to play asteroids defender joust uh you know <laughs> it, it's a pretty mm. small list that that i'm that i'm dealing with so that is where there becomes the question of, like you said, you want the all-in-one machine, but at what cost? So yeah. I think there's where Arcade 1UP is doing one version of things, and they're going to have their custom software. And then if you want to have the all-in-one, here comes part two. Yep. At Games. At so, Games. 
we right. we're we're not exactly uh, up on the time. <laughs> like we get our information about ad games elsewhere because they're not sending us uh, material. Um, they're they're but... literally like stonewalling us. It's not even getting a single response back to an email, which you know is disappointing. Wait, did you send um, an email? I didn't send an email. Oh, you didn't send an email? No, I did not. No, I thought you might have because I, I suggest I did find an email address that we can use, um, but no, I didn't actually bother sending it. But uh, no, maybe, although maybe we we, we did like... get stonewalled in one other aspect in that, uh, uh, well, I won't go into into the <laughs> the people that know know that they got a certain uh, request sent to them, and uh, we at the blockade did not get contacted. <laughs> yeah. Which so, is interesting, um, but Jared, why don't you kind of touch upon uh, what At Games is is doing? So At Games is, from what I've seen in all of the Facebook groups, I mean, what they are offering as a product is a subscription based pay as you play model um, for their games. If you don't bring your own Steam library and import that into the game, or when I say import that, essentially it means plugging your own PC into the cabinet and use it as a like, essentially a controller cabinet like you've got sitting behind you chris okay hold um, on hold on let's let's back up because i think we we forgot one critical piece of information what we're talking about ad games is making a pinball cabinet <laughs> yeah so at games are making a pinball cabinet yes <laughs> and um, that pinball cabinet is going to feature a 32 inch screen as opposed to the 24 inch screen that i believe is going to be on the uh, arcade one up cab hmm and yeah, uh, yes, yes. Um, it's also going to be, I believe, streaming ready, so that uh, you can and with Wi-Fi, so that you can uh, basically at the push of a button start a Twitch stream of your gameplay and uh, be able to go from there. Uh, the price I believe they were gunning for is about six hundred dollars. I think does that sound right, Jared? It's around that. I think it's in competition with the estimated price of the One Up cabinet. Right. But uh, what and what they're saying is you can play any game that you want pretty much because, yeah, you're going to have to dump your own PC into it. That's right, yes. But the other thing that we found out is that Farsight actually uh, has been licensed from At Games, I believe, or has entered into a uh, partnership of sorts with them much like they've done with Toy Shock, and this is where I'm kind of blown away that they're even able to do this, um, mm-hmm. that, um, uh, that they're going staggered. to... Staggered. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do this. Uh, they're going to let you play, I believe they're saying, 22 uh, pinball tables, which would basically be every all the Gottliebs, uh, just not the Elven G titles. Yeah. Um, but there is where it became, well, wait a second, how are they going to manage to do that? And this is where I think Jared is talking about the subscription. Okay, now that I got him up to speed, go, Jared. Yeah, so this whole subscription model thing is interesting. What I've heard, again, unconfirmed, because I haven't released a lot of information, um, is that it'll be a charge per hour um, for if you want to stream games to the cabinet and play it. Um, So... I, I don't really understand. I, so, A, for you to be able to stream games, it seems like they're going to be using um, the pinball cabinet almost like a Roku um, or something like that. So, wait, wait. So what you're saying is it's not that the software is even built into the cabinet. It's not like there's a board of the software running. It's going to be a streaming service. Yeah, I think so. I actually think this thing is going to be like um, Apple Games Studio, whatever they call it, where you're streaming games to the system oh Um, i don't think pinball lag time is ready for that (laughs) i well look i tell you what it won't work well down here in australia with the with the jump yeah google stadia that's the one thanks pinball whiz um the the whole thing about streaming only works if you have servers in the country that you are living in and i'll guarantee you that at games will not be having one in australia so that means that we're going to be subject to the hop over the ditch to the US and then back again to stream this stuff. And even with like NBN as well on a, on a decent NBN tier with no problems, that's not going to be a fun time. You, you talk about flipper lag on the toy shop cabinet, get ready for more flipper lag. Well, that's <laughs> what I'm saying, I'm saying because I've tried, 
I tried doing uh, it's not PlayStation Now, but it was basically the the ability to uh, you could log into your PS4 on your PC and play PS4 games. Yeah, and I tried doing that with uh, I I tried doing it with both TP and with Zen, and it was unplayable. The the lag was mm. just too severe. I tried doing it as well when I had a um, a Shield tablet, Shield uh, Shield Android tablet. You could use their streaming service, and this was back when MBN wasn't even a thing. Like we were still using dial, not dial up. We may as well be dial up, <laughs> ADSL two plus, and you could stream games like from a server and play it on your on your tablet, which was pretty amazing at the time. But boy, was it laggy as hell. Uh, it was not a fun experience. And that was just on games that were like at the time PC games, not even pinball games. It was like you really had to make a lot of concessions in your mind to go, I'm I'm playing a PC game on my tablet. This is cool. And I say cool, like cool. <laughs> because it was like, not cool. I, look what I can do. It's not that I want to do it. It's what yeah, I can do. <laughs> I can stream this laggy game to my tablet. It's fantastic. But, you know, if you're paying $600 for a dedicated appliance that's supposed to let you do this and let you play Bone Busters clacking away at you um, uh, with the amount of lag that it will have, I, I think it's just it's it's a shyster sandwich if you ask me. Like uh, it, it sounds like to me, like this is basically so that they can say, "Yeah, we come with games," mm. um, and uh, rather than advertising the sheer fact that you are uh, being a a shell to bring the stuff into and play um, so that yeah. you're so that you can advertise hey at 600 bucks yes you can actually play a game not it's 600 bucks oh and now add in the cost of your pc interestingly i think that's how they've got around the whole problem of having competitive products in the market because what they're doing here is they're not installing software on a bespoke board in inside the unit they're making their library their content library accessible to another in other words, it's like having it with Steam. It's Very just much. not Steam. So therefore, yeah. they're not it's, in it's conflict certainly with steaming. Toy Shock. Right. It's steaming, but uh. it's not Steam. <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, I, 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 I tell you, Farsight is dancing on a razor's edge. <laughs> they, oh, I, think... I mean, I get it. They're... You know, people ask us all the time, why don't we talk about Farsight? Why don't we speculate at Farsight? Because this is we why. De- because <laughs> we, we declared them dead uh, over a year ago. Um, th- and they were we done with pinball. we haven't seen any evidence to suggest otherwise. E- exactly, exactly. And every single time something kind of emerges, we just kind of go, huh? So, I mean, prime example of that is just with Toy Shock putting out their cabinet and there's no slam on toy shock but with farsight licensing their software to them it's like well what about arcuda yeah and i know arcuda is you know right now not making anything due to uh, the covid situation but it's still one of those things where you were in an agreement you were in a thing with them and now you're basically pumping out a undercutting them by like about a factor of 10 yeah with this product like come on mate like that's pretty dodgy. And, and not only that, but the software that you're using looks suspiciously like the same software that was being put into the Arcuda machine. Well, yeah, well, it, it was, it's certainly not Steam on um, exactly. the Toy Shock. It's, it's definitely well, not, an Android build. definitely not Steam. Um, yeah. So, it's, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's, and, and then, here again, we go back to the conversation that we had with David McIntosh, and it was near the end of the, the interview. Mm. You'll you'll notice he had a moment where he said that he just when I I questioned how One Up feels about uh, an overcrowded this market. Competition, yeah. yeah, yeah, and he basically was like, "We're fine with the competition. We just want everybody to uh, do it cleanly, <laughs> not play dodgy." In other words, yes, yeah. And there's a reason. There's a good reason for that, and that is if one company is being dodgy, it makes the people that hold the licenses leery of working with another company. But if everybody is yeah. above board and doing it, 
uh, properly, properly, then uh, those licensors are more willing to uh, deal with that. And that's specifically something that Arcuda was also a big champion of, that all the cabinets they'd made prior, previously, it was with full cooperation of the license holders, and right. they wanted to maintain doing that. So it's it's kind of interesting seeing... Look, I, I really like what Arcuda set out to do. Like, they, they really did set out to do things right and and try to go down the path of, like, getting the approvals. And, like, these things... The problem with doing this is this: these things take a lot of time. So they they spent the time, they got the approvals, but unfortunately, they weren't operating on a level playing field. And literally every other company in China went, ah, no, nah, let's not do that. <laughs> let's just go and do the thing and, and make the cabinets and uh, basically copy everything. So, yeah. And then they were left just holding the cap and going, well, okay, that's two years of work down the drain. Let's start again, I guess. You know, and, you know, it makes me think of Jared is that, you know, these little things that uh, you and I love to play with the fidget cubes. And uh, yeah. we went into the whole deal <laughs> of how ANSI Games was their, your ANSI Labs was yeah, ANSI the first Labs. one to make one of these. And then the knockoffs came, which was, uh, hey, look, I bought the knockoff. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden, you still weren't, they still weren't available on the market. And all of a sudden, this one came. And when I got it from an, uh, a Kickstarter, and I love this one, but it was immediately cease and desist, and they were no longer able to uh, even sell these. And all that you see in stores anymore are what ANSI Games did because they got their patent. They, they really enforced it hard. Yeah. Exactly. And um, that is not what's happening in the digital pinball market where uh, once a piece of tech gets the out there, place. China just goes, wee And then China comes around and goes, hey, do you want to buy something? And the other companies go, hey, that looks good. Where'd that come from? I don't know. I don't care. Let's go. Hey, <laughs> don't worry about where that came from. You don't need to worry about that. Let's just buy the thing. Let's do a deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so, super, super legit, legit, legit. <laughs> so here's here's <laughs> here's my thing then when it, when it comes down to when if you're, like I said, the, the one-up cab apparently is coming soon. And when they say fall, I'm fall. guessing August, September. That's kind of mm. when I believe this is going to be uh, approached. Probably September. Because um, that gets it into the stores prior to holiday, which gives a little ramp up of sales and then gives them knowledge for how much they need to build in time for holiday. Uh, and probably enough time for them to do minor iterations for them to then roll that into what they release internationally according right. to what john d was saying where australia could theoretically see these around christmas time um so that would make sense i guess yeah now at the same yeah. time in that same period of time we're gonna supposedly we're gonna see wave two of toy shocks machine uh or when i say wave two i should say 1.2 so that's the uh Still the original yep. 12 Gottlieb, 12 and 1, the Gottlieb tables that they previously did in the Haunted House cab, but now you'll be able to pick one of four skins and it'll have the updated bezel, the updated uh, uh, plunger, and the yeah. 60 frames per second uh, play on that. And then at the same time, I believe At Games is also coming out. Now, do you remember what time, what their time frame was, Jared? Yeah, I can't remember. Um I mean, whatever, it's going to be between fall and Christmas, right? They, they're going to need to target that market if they're not silly. Right, right. Um, so, because otherwise it's going to be, yeah, left, left holding the hat, basically. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're going to be in the market for one of these things, they're all right around the same price point. So now the question is So what becomes, do you buy? What do you buy for your, for your $600? Like, exactly. And that's where uh, it's, well, what is it you want? Yeah. If you want to bring in all the pinball tables that you already have, and you're cool with uh, connecting up a PC to these things. And again, based off of what's in the 1UP cab that I have there, it's got a PC, it's got a controller board, it's got a... a... The At Games isn't going to have you have this. It's probably At Games is going to probably be more closer to plug and play with your, with your PC, I got to say. It, it, I think you should probably consider almost... Like, and this is the other... 
this is the, the the questionable thing. What they're doing is they they're kind of doing what Akuda is doing with their like interface yes. um, for games. Like this is the thing that makes me really uncomfortable because like the, the whole idea with Arcuda is you can take any anything and plug it into it and it just starts to work as a Xbox controller and off you go. It's kind of exactly what this arcade one up thing is. And no, the at games not, thing the, is. The, yeah, the, yes, so not yeah. arcade one up at games, thank you. Um and that's not really sitting with me very well at all. Because like, you feel that it's uh, somebody looking at what Arcuda was doing and and directly copying. One hundred percent. That's exactly what they've done. Like they have copied the the idea almost to the letter. Except no, not even. I was going to say no, but they haven't actually got screens. Oh yeah, what they have. So it's basically exactly. It's okay, exactly but what the, the doing. only thing that I'm going to say with that is that one people that did put money down for Arcuda wound up having to have that money refunded and that was two years ago. Uh, still no product. So, I mean, there is an issue of, hey, whoever puts product on the market. So if you're in the market at this time, Arcuda's off the table. So it's not even yeah. there. It's not even there. Um, so, and that's, the, yeah, <laughs> I keep saying that with, with Arcuda as much as I love them, they have trouble releasing product. And that's a big problem when you're trying to sell something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyhow. So so there so there's the choice. If you're somebody that wants to heavily mod and and do this, then the ad games cab is probably gonna be for you. Uh if yes, you're absolutely yeah. If you're somebody that is looking for aesthetics of a pinball machine with the artwork that goes with a pinball machine. Well, okay, now you're looking at both at game or uh, oh, this is getting confusing, isn't it? Uh, you're looking at no, see how I'm having trouble with it? Like it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're, you're looking at either the Toy Shock uh, cab with uh, Gottlieb tables or you're looking at the Arcade 1-Up with... Now again, artwork is not finalized yet according to David. So who knows if the... We keep on referring to it as the Attack from Mars cab because that's what they showed at CES and it was full artwork of Attack from Mars. And based off of other Arcade 1-Up cabs, they pick one of their things based the whole cab off that and then yes they have the additional games um so odds are yeah it's still gonna be an attack from mars cabinet or you can have something with star wars art or something with marvel art uh, you know so again there's your aesthetics on that end and then you got to go well hey do you want to play gottlieb tables or mm. do you want to play one thing that has williams and some zen originals well, yeah. And to do that, you're going to have to get multiple units. So there's going to be multiple expenses of of 600 bucks. So do you have deep enough pockets to right. collect them all? Right, which adds up. Well, based off of some of the uh, the homerooms that I've seen, <laughs> people making some arcades, people have deep some enough people pockets. have deep enough pockets, yeah. Yeah, they, uh. they kind of do. <laughs> I was laughing because one guy that I was watching who has every single arcade one-up machine was sitting there going yeah i don't think i'm gonna get one of the pinball machines i'm like dude you know you are mm -hmm. <laughs> Just don't even don't even play your nut <laughs> yeah it's gonna happen whether you realize it yet or not you're gonna be getting one of these things because all it's gonna take is getting your hands on one you're gonna be like hey that's that's kind of cool I, that's I gotta cool dig must that. have them all yeah yeah it's, it's gonna be a thing but i don't know look it sounds like this is the this is the tricky thing so with um, arcade one up, um, I, it it seems that perhaps in future waves um, you might see internet connectivity added to this thing, but you don't know because there's certainly been no official announcement yet. There's been hints, and I certainly highlighted those hints in my show notes from the last um, uh, episode, where. I inferred from what the um, what everyone was saying that yeah, it, this may not be the last time you actually see a round of pinball cabinets from this company. But if you are willing to make that bet and wait for Arcade One Up to release their product line, and I would imagine if you are an Arcade One Up fan, you would not want to mix in stuff from Act Games or Toy Shock into your collection because it needs to just be 
on brand. Um, so that's a decision you're going to have to make as well. Do I hold off for wave two or do I just take it as it comes and, and give the man the money? Which is hard to decide too, considering what the first two generations of the arcade one-up cabs are compared to what they look like now. I mean, one of the mm -hmm. things everybody points out to is how much better the screens are now as opposed mm -hmm. to what they were for their first two uh, two gens of releases. Um, the buttons have gotten better because uh, that was one of the first things everybody was swapping out. Um, but, the joysticks which and the buttons. Which is kind of like, well, why would you buy something that's an arcade cabinet if the buttons are crappy? Like, that's, exactly. That's, exactly. That's so, so I'm hoping all those lessons that uh, were learned from those are getting applied to these pinball cabs that we're going to get oh, top-notch buttons, top-notch uh, screen. I would very much doubt that they're going to start from scratch with all the lessons they've learned and, and not apply them to the pinball line because that just makes no sense at all. They would absolutely do that. They would produce something that's essentially got all of their product knowledge rolled into these things at once. And I think from what you've seen um, on the, like, the limited video coverage you see in the cabinets, um, they they look pretty robust and um that's one thing i i hear from arcade one up customers that their cabins are actually well built so i think we can expect that same build quality with arcade one up for sure yeah i mean the 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 materials used for the cabinet itself it's it, you're basically building them ikea furniture um yeah that's how it's assembled and it feels solid once you're there uh, and yeah, like I said, they've... it's solid once you lock them all together. But it is, it's, it's still um, like particular MDF board oh, that they yeah. use to make them. But I mean, you're not expecting six ply because you don't need the weight. Support. No, you like, don't need it the weight. Doesn't need to be that heavy. Exactly. I just and noticed... that's also the attraction of them, right? Like they're easy to move around. You yeah. don't have to actually worry about, uh, yeah, getting specialist equipment. I just noticed a uh, comment here on the thread uh, with somebody saying, "Yeah, they're an addiction." Uh, <laughs> mm. Started in April 2019 and currently has 12 of them. Most of the reduced price when sales go on. <laughs> and that is a good point. I, if you if you have the market, I don't know if we'd see this to the extent here in Australia, but certainly in the domestic US market. I'd, I'd imagine with the supply that you get in the retailers, it, you probably could, if you're savvy enough, pick them up at a reduced price. And that that might help those folks who want to get all three cabinets when they're released. So that was one of the YouTube videos that I watched. Mm. Um, in the US, there's basically only one retailer that carries them in store, and that's Walmart. Uh, Walmart. Costco yeah. carries them at, uh, during the holidays, but... Mm. Other than that, everybody was, uh, it's all online sales. Oh. Walmart, at any given time, seems to only carry two of the cabinets. Oh, and... Best Buy Online, apparently, as well. What's that? Best Buy Online. Oh, yeah, no, no. Online, there's all sorts of, shoot, Home Depot carries them online. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, no, online, you, you can get them all over the place. But physically in store, you walk in, you pick it up, you walk out. It seems like right. Walmart's the only one, and they Walmart. only carry about two different cabs at any given time. And uh, what people are noticing is when the next wave of cabs comes in, Walmart wants to blow out what they have, and they have no qualms about knocking the price. Uh, price drops down to about fifty bucks. Fit what? Yeah. From what is uh? So how much are they to buy outright? Uh, typically three hundred. Whoa, that's a steep discount. Yes, and then not only that, but uh, people, and I saw it for myself in terms of uh, what lowest price offered was on something, and somebody <laughs> was even able to show receipts of this. One dollar for... Yeah, exactly. That's what um friend of the show, RDK14, says in the chat. Some got a cab for one dollar. Yeah, they basically picked up uh, the, uh, <laughs> the Asteroids cabinet, and the Defender cabinet. Those were the those were the first two releases. Uh, nothing else. You can't even get an app on the App Store for that. You got yourself a, a, a whole cabinet that you can use. I mean, yeah. you'd yeah. have to be pretty much smiling like a chess of your cab. But but most uh, recently, you know, people were able to get the Star Wars cab for fifty dollars. Fifty bucks. See, when you're talking about that money, then that's a no brainer. You just got to shut up and take it. You know? Guess what? I've got a uh, a watch on <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, I'd imagine, yeah. <laughs> because I know what two cabs are being carried currently, and honestly, I don't even care. It's like, hey, if you go down to that price, I'll, you know, 
how can you say no? And uh, believe me, then they'll be going back up on Craigslist. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, look, one person's problem is another person's profit in this case, right? Yeah. So point being, keep your eyes open and see what happens. But there's where I'm curious. That's why I asked the question. Is the pinball going to be going into retail or is it only going to be online? Mm. I think it is going like what we inferred from the chat says they're going to have partners retail partners to sell these things yeah um so i think looking looking a, a walmart near you for a big big box with branding on it from arcade one up but as far as that games goes like all we've seen or heard about this thing is through a spreadsheet so uh which there was a brilliant tweet i forget <laughs> It was from I forget who it was from that game. It was from, from John D. It was from John D. <laughs> it was from John D. Uh, on his Twitter, saying that he would be fired if he if he put out a spreadsheet and let it be announced on uh, a Twitch stream. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yes, that was a summarized version of the tweet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, summarized. you're right. It, it was it was summarized with some re- bits redacted, but if you go to the John D's, it's uh, Dynamom on Twitter. You can you can see it for yourself. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was uh, interesting. Uh, but yes, getting back to my point, okay, because I'm great at going off tangents. Um, the point was we don't even know what these things look like. There's oh no yeah, pictures. from from ad games, right? No, no idea. We, we and on the on the concept of you know, the the idea about um you know what cabinet do you buy for branding, or like for the aesthetics of it? Well, who knows with that games? Who who knows what's going to look like? Will it just have the regular legends branding on it? What's it? Um, yeah, we don't know. So you can't really if you're making a decision now or planning ahead on what you're going to buy, you can't really factor in what a games is doing because you just don't exactly know what they're going to be producing yeah so it's all on a wing and a prayer I, I was say, did, did, did we help out at all today <laughs> <laughs> i don't know uh, t- t- tldr wait to a little bit closer to um fall when a lot more details are going to be out but you know for now it'll get your gears turning as to what what you might want to do with your theoretical five or six hundred dollars um if if you have that just lying around going sharp and i I really need to spend it if it's screaming at you to spend it yeah yeah Yeah. and it's one of those things too where i I think i mentioned it before uh i don't know where i had this conversation the last week it might have been in the podcast it might not but it was Mm. (laughs) right now with having one cab eh, that's easy you can put it anywhere in the house it uh, you know doesn't take up much space whatever Mm. If you got two, well, you kind of want them relatively Together. close, but they don't have to be side by side, but you might mm. want them somewhere, you know, but you can still be spread out a little bit. If you get yeah. three, you have an arcade now. No, they have to be together. Now you have to yeah. have the proper space for them. So <laughs> it starts to get more and more complex. My, my, like, my wife just popped her head around the corner and gave me a dirty look. <laughs> he's like, no, you're not. It, short answer no you're not chris well i think i think ultimately if that if that happened uh this thing behind me would suddenly turn into something else um, yeah yeah and, and this this room in here would become that so yeah pretty much yeah uh yeah bye bye little mini controller cabinet see you later <laughs> You know, I'm looking at my room at the moment where I do the podcast and um, over, if you switch to my camera, Chris, over like to this side, actually, no, it's that side. Um, I don't know which side it is because I'm reversed. Um, I'm doing like the YMCA thing in the right. street. So over there, there's an empty space. It's right near my window. Um, and I'm looking at it now. I'm going, I could probably at a pinch fit a um, uh, an arcade one-up cabinet in there. Because of the size, and this is the this is the thing, right? This is why these cabinets are attractive because they will fit in the bedroom with other stuff in them if you need them to. Yes. Um, so yeah, it could be a spot. I'd have to clear out some stuff, which I'd be happy to do because it's just a <laughs> junk room at the moment. Uh, and yeah, it would go there. And then between meetings, exactly as John D said, between meetings, you just flick it on, have a bit of a game, and then flick it off and get back to work. Like, ah. Oh. And, that, and that's definitely the thing that I'm noticing with, uh, again, with me playing Pac-Man. I push a button, I start playing. 
I'm done. And I you, push the button. You, I walk away. It's not me having to come on, turn on the computer, get it out of sleep mode, loading up Steam, getting it going, plugging in the controller, loading up the game, and then playing. You know, I mean, we're talking, sure, Switch that only takes you two or three minutes, but it's done. still time. Yeah. Yeah. How long does it take to boot? The the cab? Yeah. Uh, because the computer basically gets put into sleep mode with the push of a power button, um, it, it's 15 seconds. Wow. Okay. So you're playing in about 30 seconds. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's um, about the same amount of time as you like fumbling around for a, a quarter in your pocket and walking up to an arcade machine. Pretty you know? much. Over in the uh, comments good. section, uh, RKD14 also said it will show her a Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man cab. Uh, you mean like this? And, and, and look, if I flick it on, it actually functions. And with joysticks that work. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's the nice one yeah i i would love to have just an entire row of these of these <laughs> i tell you what as far as ability to fit into a small space you pretty much got that market slowed up right there with those hey eh? right i mean i can yeah. just line up the uh the desktop with the it, it's funny because these were all the rage about a year and a half ago um yeah, they have I think four different. There's a I know there's a centipede with rollerball. <laughs> oh, with a trackball. With a wow. trackball. Yeah. Um, but miniaturizing that is no mean feat. No, because that's a that's a very like if you have a look at one of those trackballs below the surface of the machine in the, like a centipede, it's a big unit. So miniaturizing that and making it actually accurate wouldn't be easy. Yeah. So I, it was one of those things where like, oh, that'd be really cool to have a whole bunch of these. These were 20 bucks a pop. 20 bucks. Yeah, but they look good. It does look good. And it's playable. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just really tiny. <laughs> yeah. It's the kind of thing that if I had a Tron machine, I'm sure I would plop this into it. Or the, yeah. you know, the Tron yeah. pinball. Mm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. That'd be pretty sweet. <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, mm. I'm well, saving that, things, Jared. I mean, it, it is an hour, and I'm saving things because uh, there's more that we can talk about. Just oh, yeah, but, purely you know, based wanna, off, like... of, just purely based off of Mel's uh, statement that uh, we oh, have. That there's a whole episode of its own. It does blockade, deserve a whole episode of for its our own. trademark blockade speculation <laughs> that you will come to the show for. <laughs> Yeah, but just what like we're the milkshakes, for, our speculation bring the boys to the yard. Yeah, what what we're hoping <laughs> for is Zen said that they would announce uh, the next tables mid July, and mm. so that's why we're, we're doing, getting up there. That's why, we're, yeah, and we're doing this podcast this week, so that then we could probably take off next week, or if need be, come back next week, or wait an additional. Anyway, the whole point is hopefully next we'll podcast we'll out. actually be talking about. Uh, something tangible and then we can tie that into uh, the statements that uh, were made there yeah that will actually dovetail in quite nicely yeah so if you're wondering yeah. what the plan is that's the plan uh that we probably are not podcasting next week we'll go back to a two-week schedule unless something gets announced yeah that's right but we just couldn't help ourselves this week no, well, I didn't want to get too far away from uh, from the interview and just kind of touch upon those things, and too far away from the ad games stuff because literally that info has been out for I think about a month now. It has been, but it just hasn't felt right to talk about it. Yeah, um, hasn't really fit in. So yeah, it's well uh, that it we were saving our two hundred episode for something interesting, not just us talking about. Well, you know, Jared, mm, stuff and things which is exactly what we'll talk about next time. All right, folks. Indeed. Hey, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. We have fun doing it. Hope you guys have fun listening, watching, and or whatever it is that you uh, do on that front. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, split screen, bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you, see you, see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>